Now I know, a lot of y'all probably just clicked this video like, Keiko, what is going on? Your teammate tried to kill you, you stole his bitch. What's happening, Keiko? What happened? Now let me just give y'all a quick little reenactment. Before we do this reenactment, no dolls were hurt in the making of this. You know, shout out my little sister. She let me use the little Barbie dolls she be using and stuff. So here we have subject A. This is the girl. Here we have subject B, which is me. You feel me? I don't know why my sister got these dolls naked. Here we have subject C, her boyfriend. La la la, we're walking and we're a happy couple. We're walking and we're a happy couple. And then here I come. What's happening, y'all? Hey, Keiko, what's good? You feel me? What's up, bro? We teammates and whatever. What's up, bro? You feel me? And then the boyfriend says, hey, bro, I'll catch y'all later, man. I got to go get a workout in. I'm like, all right. She's like, okay, honey. So then it's me and this girl, and we just, you know what I'm saying, we just chilling. It's good, shorty. Hey, Kanko, oh my God, you look so good. You play for the Indiana State Sycamores. Ooh, you're a defensive back, oh my God. Hey, shorty, chill out, chill out, bro. You messed with one of my teammates, bro, we can't do that. You won't have to know. And then all the sudden, oh shoot, my brother walked in on my uh, reenactment. And then all of a sudden he's like, hey bro, why are you talking to my girl? And I'm like, hey bro, she came on to me. Nah, bro, rah, 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 yeah, bow, bow, bow. Oh my God, he's dead, oh my God. I said I don't play with dogs, bro. What's good, Certified Gang? It's your boy Keiko and I'm back with another video, back with another banger, man. As you can see, we're back with another story time and this story time is juicy. It's a good one right here. How my teammate tried to kill me because I took his, I took his girl, feel me? I took his girl. Look, in no shape or form is this video right here gateway or showing you that it's okay to take a, a dude's girl, you feel me? It's not, this is all for entertainment purposes. This is the experience I went through. Do not go out here and take people's girls, man. Respect people's relationships. But in this situation, honestly, I wasn't the one in fault. It was the shorty, but the shorty, bro, girls can really mess up the homies, the bros, all of that, man. So be careful with these girls out here, especially in college, bro. I know you guys been wanting me to be more consistent, bro. I've been super busy, man. Life's been crazy. Life can real talk be crazy, bro, but I gotta be thankful for just being here and another opportunity to be on this earth. This is a story about how my teammate tried to kill me because I took his girl, bro. This is crazy, man. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Follow me on IG and let's get straight into it. So to start this story off, you guys gotta kinda get like a little bit of background. You gotta know how Keiko was at this time period. I was college Keiko at the time. I was at Indiana State University, you already know the story. I was a walk-on on the football team. But Keiko's mindset at this time obviously was all about the football, but off the field, I had to oh, I had to shawty. Stop playing with me, I had to shawty. I ain't gonna lie, Keiko could run a little bit of game back in this time, you feel me? I was a lot more wild back then than I am now. I kinda done calmed down a little bit. But at this point in time, the girls like me. I kinda knew how to talk to them. So I was just, you know what I'm saying? I was having fun and doing my thing. I'm gonna introduce our enemy in this story. and He's not my enemy now or anything like that. Obviously, nobody holds grudges, nothing's crazy. We're gonna call him, I don't know, Johnny. Okay, we'll call him Johnny. Now Johnny, at the time, was one of my teammates, man, at Indiana State, a D1 FCS over there in Indiana. Terre Haute, Indiana. Go Sycamore Scout! He played linebacker, I played corner, you feel me? Now me and Johnny, we kinda got a bond, obviously, by getting on the football team. We both were walk-ons at the time, so we kinda could relate there, man. Being a walk-on is crazy. So me and Johnny was cool because of that reason, man. We spent a lot of time around each other because we was all walk-ons, we was all new guys. Just like I'm at Compton College right now and I'm doing spring ball now, it was the same thing at Indiana State. And spring ball is basically the time that the returners and some new people they just get to practice, you feel me? You get to get into, you kind of get to get into the system before like fall camp and everything like that. Me and Johnny got even a stronger bond because um, at this time I, I worked at like finish line during the summer and everything like that. I was super into sneakers. I would have shoes in and out and I would sell shoes to him all the time, bro. I used to, bro, it's crazy. I really had no money back then, but I would find a way to get some shoes. And Johnny was a sneakerhead at the same time. So stuff that he, you know, that I was getting, I would sell to him and everything like that. And we just became cool with chain numbers and all of that. So at this time in spring ball, man, I was going through spring ball with no issues, no problems. Everything was cool. Me and Johnny was cool. We would talk, you know, all of that. But now we got to introduce the other enemy in this. And I call her an enemy because she just ruined everything, bro. We're going to call her Sabrina, bro. Now, Sabrina was a shorty at Indiana State, obviously. And let's just get into how I met Sabrina. So at this point in time, the basketball season was still going on. And a lot of y'all may be like, bro, you're tripping. How you say this is the springtime and basketball season's going on? Well, in college, bro, 
Basketball goes all the way into the spring and everything like that, bro. And me and the homie at the time, for this day, and I remember the day specifically, it was a Thursday, bro. This day specifically, me and the homie's like, hey, bro, you know, I had got out of practice. We didn't have nothing to do. It was a Thursday night. They had the Thirsty Thursday. Listen, if you know about college, you know about the Thirsty Thursday. You go to a little Thirsty Thursday party, you feel me? Girls get they twerk. Oh, shit! It was Thursday, there was a basketball game, so me and the homie decide, hey, bro, we're going to go to this basketball game, and then after that, we're going to go out, you know what I'm saying, and have some fun. So that's what me and the homie do. I think the basketball game was like at 7 p.m. It was nighttime, bro, and if you know about Indiana, bro, it's cold year-round, bro. It was cold in the springtime, cold as hell. And my friend was always notorious for wearing shorts in the cold, bro. Like, he didn't care what the weather, if it was freezing cold, snow on the ground, all of that. Bro, he would wear shorts anywhere. I wonder what that tells you about his race. Yeah, yeah, he may have been a Caucasian. Every time he would come in the cold and shorts, bro, I would always get on him about that. And the reason I'm telling y'all this is because it plays into the story. So me and the homie get to the basketball game, right? And we find seats. I go get some popcorn. I think he gets some from the concession stand. We go find seats, you know what I'm saying? And we sit down. And you know, soon, you know, into the basketball game, nobody really paying attention. I ain't gonna lie. People didn't really pay attention to Indiana State hoops. They was just there to kind of have a good time. And uh, you know, I start taking notice, you feel me? My my bat my my badminton muscles was my badminton muscle was tingling, you feel me? I noticed that in front of me, you know what I'm saying? It seems like there were some particular honeys in front of me that could be possibly baddies. You feel me? Now I don't know, I know nobody say baddies no more. I just said baddies. There was this black girl sitting in front of me, and right next to her was this white girl. You know what I'm saying? And I told you, just I just said my friend was Caucasian at the time. So it's like a perfect match. You know, I got a black shorty for me. He got a, a little, you know what I'm saying? He got a little white chocolate for him. I didn't see Sabrina's face at this time. You feel me? I just seen a whole bunch of curly hair, and her hair was real. They said her hair was real, Keiko, what? Her hair was real, bro. Real curly, you feel me? Big and beautiful, all of that. So I started thinking to myself, I'm like, hmm. I want to see if, you know, old girl cute or not, you know, feel me? Because I could have, like, tapped on her shoulder. She could have turned around. She could have been butt ugly. So I formulated a plan. I told you how earlier I would make fun of my friend for wearing, you know, shorts in the cold. I tap on Sabrina's shoulder in front of me, bro, and she turns around. And when she turned around, it was like, she was bad as hell, boy. Now, Slim, don't get mad at me. You know what I'm saying? This was the past me. I'm just telling you that she was smooth. She was smooth, okay? I ain't gonna get too much more into how I met her, but just know at the end of this night, at the end of this night, she got my number and she came to my dorm room the same day. The same day she came to my dorm room the same day. How you do that, Keiko? I mean, you just met her and she's texting you and then she comes to the dorm? You know how she get, I ain't learning shit today cause I'm in the main. So she come to my dorm room the first night, you feel me? It's cool, all of that. Like I said, this time I wasn't really looking for nothing serious. It was cool. I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of lesson here, man. Some girls out here are girls that are dateable. Some girls are not dateable. And when you meet the girls, you can kind of see how they act and how they are. And then you can go from there. And see, at this point, when I had met this girl, at first I was just like, whatever. But then as I started, you know, talking to her when she was in my dorm room, all of that, I started realizing like, hey, this girl could possibly, just might possibly be dateable. So the next few days come, so the next few days come, and you know, the girl's still hanging with me. You feel me? She's still hanging out with me, bro. So at this point, I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? She's cool. Let's try to pick her brain a little bit more, man. And this should have been the first red flag right here, bro. So we start talking about our past and everything. We start talking about, you know what I'm saying, who we messed with at the school, all this other stuff, bro. And she proceeds to tell me that she used to mess with a dude on the football team. And you see, listen, I don't care if you play football, I don't care if you play basketball, baseball, chess team. I don't care if you're in a video game league. If you are talking to a girl, you do not want that girl to have any type of relations with anybody else on your team, bro. It's just embarrassing, bro. It's just bro code, bro. You just don't like that. But once she told me that, that was like a red flag. And I'm like, hold up. Who did you, who did you talk to on a football team? And she proceeds to tell me a name. But the name I did not recognize at all, you feel me? And we'll just make up a name. We'll say she said Roosevelt. I don't know. She said, oh, his name was Roosevelt. I'm like, Roosevelt? There ain't no Roosevelt on the team, bro. Like, I knew everyone's name on the whole team. There was not no Roosevelt, bro. I even checked the roster twice just to make sure there was no Roosevelt. I'm like, bro, there's no Roosevelt. And I told her this. She was like, yeah, he was on the football team, this and that. But I kind of shrugged it off because I'm like, oh, maybe he was just a dude that used to be on the football team. He gone now, this is that. 
I don't know. I didn't know what was going on. Continue living, you feel me? I continue, you know, talking to her and everything like that. This is where everything goes down here, bro. One day she's in my dorm room. I'm on the game, you feel me? I think at the time I had an Xbox. I was on the game chilling. She was back there on Snapchat or whatever. And she's going through people's Snap stories, you feel me? So she hits this one dude's Snap story, you feel me? I guess he had like posted a picture or a video of himself. And she was like, see, look, this is Roosevelt. She showed me the picture. She showed me the Snapchat story, bro. And that one ain't no dang Roosevelt, bro. That was Johnny, my teammate, the dude that I sold shoes to, the dude that we was cool with, we was walk on together, all that. It was Johnny. Bro, this man done told her his name was Roosevelt, bro. Mind you, I found out later the reason he told her that is because he was kind of like in a relationship with another girl that was like kind of back home. But anyway, that's not about that. She shows me the Snapchat story. I'm like, Johnny. That's Johnny, bro. What are you talking about Roosevelt? You feel me? And like this look goes on her face like she's just puzzled. She's like, what? I've never heard of that name before. Like, why would he tell me his name's different, bro? And this is where it made me mad because the girl then proceeds to go on her phone, call Johnny, bro, like in front of me in my room and everything like that. Calls him, put him on speakerphone. And she was like, is your name really Johnny? Are you Johnny? And like, it, you could tell it kind of took him off, you know, like it, it, it kind of hit him by surprise. Like, what are you talking about? He was like, yeah, that's my middle name or whatever this is that. She was like, so why'd you tell me your name was this, this, that, and this and other stuff. And they started getting an argument on the phone, bro. That made me so mad because one, it's my teammate. Two, you still calling this dude. I thought you used to talk to him. Come to find out she still talked to him. So I already knew, man. I was always the type of dude that, I, like I said, football was first to me. Never like no drama, but girls was always my issue, bro. If you're a football player, man, leave these girls alone. Because, bro, girls can be an issue. So I pretty much already knew this was going down here, you feel me? At this point, you know what I'm saying, when she called him and everything like that, that sparked Johnny's, you know, interest in, you feel me? He's like, bro, who's talking to this girl? Who's talking to my girl? Because, you feel me, now she calling me this. Only football players would know my real name, you feel me? So I guess he came and been an inspector gadget, had a whole freaking notepad with names on it, was checking off names. No, it wasn't you. No, it wasn't you. Texting everybody, bro. Even the other walk ons was telling me, like, hey, bro, he asked if I was talking to this girl named so and so. And so I knew my time was coming. I knew he was eventually going to text me. Once everybody, he checked everybody else off the list, I knew he was going to text me. But then, like, some days go by. He texted me. He was like, hey, bro. Are you talking to Sabrina, bro? And like, I ain't no bitch now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no bitch now. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be scared. You feel me? I'm gonna tell him straight up. I said, yeah, bro. Why? And that's when it all started. You feel me? That's when the beef started, man. I'm telling you, these girls can mess everything up. Me and him started beefing, bro. He's like, hey, bro, why are you talking about me? This is that. I was like, bro, I wasn't even talking about you. She showed me a Snapchat, and I was like, oh, Johnny. You feel me? Like, I, it was no like intent to it. I wasn't trying to mess some stuff up. So he's mad about that, and I'm like, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? Hey, your tone. I don't really like your tone, bro. I really beat your ass. What's up? I'm just playing. I wasn't really like that, but I was starting to get a little frustrated because I'm like, bro, what are you coming at me for? Like, that ain't my fault. You lied to her. You feel me? You got caught in a lie. That's your fault. Mind you, at this time, I'm still thinking like she not really messing with him and everything like that. So I'm just thinking like me and this dude is beefing. It's annoying. You feel me? I'll go to practice. Me and this dude wouldn't even speak or nothing. We we knew it was hot. You feel me? But obviously, like when you're on a D1 team, it's the NCAA. You can't just be you know going out here and fighting and going crazy. But we was talking crazy, bro. Like, he was talking to me crazy in the text. He was talking about he gonna pull up. I'm like, pull up then, you feel me? He gonna see what we, and he was like, we gonna see what's happening, you feel me? We gonna see what's happening. He said he was gonna put that fire on me. He said he was gonna pop a glock on my, kill me, you feel me? It was getting so bad, bro. Like, the girl was beefing and everything with both of us and all of that, bro. I told the girl, kick rocks, bro. Get out of here. Kick rocks. It got so bad to the point because I found out that she was still, you know what I'm saying, letting that dude pull up to her dorm, and he was in her dorm, and they was talking and hanging out and all this stuff. I think it was one of them issues to where, like, bro didn't really mess with her like that, but he was kind of just mad that she went and started messing with somebody else, especially someone that he knew. He's just mad all smoother than he did, you know, smoother. It got so bad to the point where the girl was like, I'm about to go to y'all coaches, and I'm about to tell y'all coaches what's going on, bro. And at that point, I knew. I said, listen, bro. This has got to stop here, bro, because I was already a walk-on. It's easy for them to kick me off the team, bro. So I basically, like I said, I told her to kick rock. She was crying. She was sad about all of that. But she was still linking with her old dude, you feel me? And some weeks go by, and stuff is hot, bro. Like I said, bro, I had some other stuff going on, too, bro. Like I said, bro, I was wild in college. So I had some other stuff going on. 
had some other stuff going on, so I was always like watching my backs, you know, being on my P's and Q's. And in certain areas, in certain places, even parties, bro, I would feel uncomfortable, bro, because certain people would be around, and I just knew it was hot. Like two or three weeks go by, and I stopped talking to her. Everything goes back kind of to normal because I, I removed the situation. You saw what the cancer was. The cancer was her, and I removed that situation from me. You feel me? He kind of chills out. I'm still not speaking to him, though, at practice and everything like that, and he kind of chills out. And it comes a point where we kind of become cool again, but it was still kind of weird, you feel me? And as far as what happened with the girl, bro, I think I seen her at like a party or something, and me and her start talking again, bro. I couldn't help it, so help me, Lord, she was just so good. So a lot of y'all gonna be like, bro, Keiko, you stupid for re-talking to her, but I ended up talking to her again, and this time it goes even further. This was around the time I ended up getting locked up, going to jail, all of this. So I ended up dating the girl, bro. Like, literally, the day I fixed things with her and I talked to her, I went to jail that day. And y'all already know that story. After I got out of jail, I felt kind of alone and abandoned. And so, me and this girl started dating and all of that. The dude found out again. We started kind of having beef a, a little bit again. But then, finally, stuff kind of dissipated. And it went no more. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't going to put a fire in my head no more. No, none of that. But it was just a crazy experience, a crazy story, man. Hopefully, the story it taught y'all something. I know it's entertainment. But well, hopefully it taught y'all, bro, like these females can mess up your career. I don't care what athlete you are or what level, even high school, junior high, all of that, man. Leave these girls alone, bro. They always going to be there, bro. That was the story about how my teammate tried to kill me for taking the girl. You feel me? With that being said, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Follow me on IG. And I'm out.